Welcome, everybody. Hello, hello. Hello, what's up, what's up, hello. <laughs> Reaching through the screen to you. <laughs> <laughs> You've joined a representation of uh, faculty and one student, current student from the theater department. And we're here to uh, tell you a little bit about us and to answer your questions. So I'm Susan Gratch. I'm the chair of the theater department. I teach scenic design, lighting design, and other things. And then I'm a professional designer for theater as well. I am Jamie Angel. Um, and uh, I teach uh, acting and um, children's theater. I run a professional children's theater in the summer. Uh, we tour the Northeast LA area. Um, it's composed of uh, Occidental students who we pay uh, to, to do this lovely work. I also um, teach in uh, elementary schools uh, with the Oxy students. So we learn how to work with um, third and fifth graders and teaching theater. And uh, on the side, I'm a writer. I write for a, a Netflix show called Disenchantment. So there you go. Yeah, sure. Hi, everyone. I'm Laurel Mead, and I teach dramatic literature, playwriting, musical theater, and I also teach theater going, where we trot off to the local scene in Los Angeles every week and see different shows. And of course, that's been put on hold recently, but we're looking forward to getting back to some live theater in the fall, so we'll have that up and running. Um, and I also produce a festival of plays that our students write every year, and I bring in um, guest directors and actors to collaborate with our student writers and student actors and student technicians to put on a festival of new work. And welcome. Glad to have you with us today. Thank you. Sure. Hi, everybody. So I'm Brian Fitzmorris, and I'm the production manager. And I teach technical theater and producing and um, also uh, production labs, um, both regular production labs and intensive. I also mentor the stage managers. Um, I'm also the manager of the theaters on campus, so we're also staffing, mostly with students, um, the events that happen in all of the theaters. Hello, everybody, and I'm recognizing some names there, so hello again, some of you, I think. Um, I'm Sarah Kozen. I teach the second level in the acting series called Acting One. I also direct in the department and I teach uh, the theater history course and I'm also a performance theorist. So I teach a lot of courses that look at the feedback loop between performances and impacts on the real world. Yes, thank you. My name is Will Power. I am a professional playwright and performer. Um, I teach acting two, uh, which is the complement to Sarah Cozen's course. I teach directing. I also teach a number of generative courses. So like solo performance where you're writing and performing and developing these original pieces. And I'm also interested in social justice uh, causes and courses. So I recently taught a course on the Black Arts Movement, which was a course about some uh, revolutionary Black artists in the 60s and 70s. And I also direct uh, at Occidental College during the season as well. Hi, everyone. My name is Nick Ruhlbeck. I am a current sophomore majoring in theater. I also have a minor in politics, and I'm hopefully also minoring in critical theory and social justice. Um, I and personally more of an actor person. Um, I have been in a couple of plays at Oxy so far, um, one of which was directed by, and written by Sarah Cozen. Um, and yeah, I'm also involved in multiple extracurriculars across campus. Um, I volunteer for admissions, which is part of the, re I think is pretty fitting for me to be here as well. And yeah, I'm here to answer any questions that you guys have about the student experience in the Oxy Theater Department. Um, hi, I have a question. Go for it. So I'm interested in both theater stuff and film stuff and how much 
is there kind of a link between that? Like, are there any screenwriting or film production classes that I could take or any student groups or anything like that? I can um, answer a little bit about how we um, integrate film into the acting, into my acting course. And one of the things that we do in acting one is we actually have a collaboration with a film production class in media arts and culture. So students will develop characters and based on a script um, that will then be shot into a short five minute film in collaboration with the students in the film class. We have auditioning uh, classes that Jamie Angel teaches um, where casting directors from around Los Angeles um, are brought in to meet with students and help hone audition techniques. And then we also have acting for camera classes where it's a real distillation of the skills one needs. And then Laurel's playwriting class um, teaches you the basics of, you know, narrative structure and Laurel can, um, can speak to this, but it's looking at it, um, you know, how do you use the stage, but a lot of those skills are adaptable to, um, to screen, to screenwriting. And then Laurel can talk more about the New Works Festival, but um, the New Play Festival, New Works Festival, where we have students from all over the campus presenting works. Uh, yeah, I, I can yeah, follow up. I, you know, Sarah makes a good point that there's a certain common skill set uh, about narrative storytelling. And, um, you know, I, I remember something that a, a, pre a past colleague used to say when he was asked, do we teach, um, do we teach primarily acting for the stage or acting for the camera? And he would usually answer, well, the, the essential skill set is the same. Acting is acting. And of course, then there's the specifics that you build on top of it, whether you're working for a live audience or for the camera. And we, you know, I approach the same with my playwriting class. Um, and also, I, I mean, I don't know how deeply you've looked into the campus as a whole, but we have a very vibrant and lively media arts and culture department, aka film department, um, where anything you're not picking up with us, you certainly can go study with them. But I do know that there is, like like Laurel said, there is a very vibrant um, film community on campus. There are tons of opportunities for um, Mac major, for um, to like be involved, especially when um, Mac majors are doing their senior comps. A lot of them produce like short films and they'll have you, they'll like cast students to be in those films. So that's an excellent opportunity for acting on film if you're interested in that. Um, is the play festival that you guys put on, is that specifically for short works or? We, ha we accept any kind of theatrical work, uh, any length, any style, genre, as long as it was written by a current Oxy student. And um, we, we read collectively and select competitively and then, you know, put them, do like a three week uh, production process to put them up on their feet on, on book. Um, and then I also try to provide additional opportunities for students whose plays we're not able to produce for them to work with some guests to hear the piece out loud. In fact, well, if you end up here, you will, um, you will soon realize that Los Angeles is a radically vibrant community when it comes to film and to theater. There is, it's all over the place. It really is the air that we breathe. So um, it would be a, be a nice cultural uh, change for you along that way. And you'll find there's a lot of opportunity, a lot of stuff going on. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to jump on that real quick because um, I know some of you who are in this room might be interested in uh, developing your own pieces, your own projects. And we have two student comps projects going up this weekend and I can drop that info in the chat if you wanna see um, some of the work that seniors do. Um, two, the Both of these projects that I'm going to drop in the chat are devised entirely by the students, um, created by them and pretty much produced by them. And they're gonna be on, one is gonna be a live performance on Zoom on Saturday and Sunday. And the other one had to be pre-recorded because the student is in Serbia. Um, but I'll share those with you because those are, um, uh, can give you a sense of the kind of work um, the students are doing. I had a question that may have already been answered about like non 
major participants in theater, um, just in general? Uh, as long as you are an enrolled student at Occidental College, you can take our classes, audition for our shows, submit plays to the new play festival, just be a part of the department um, as much as you want to or need to. You can, you might find yourself tempted to minor. You might find yourself going, well, I did a minor and I'm almost at a major and I might as well. Or you might just take the classes that interest you. So um, that all of those are possibilities. There really are very few barriers to participating um, in our department. We really, we really like to keep it very accessible, open to all. If you're interested, we're interested, you know. How, how did you guys deal with COVID and teaching theater stuff while everyone was still in lockdown? I, I had some, uh, Jess, I, quite frankly, initially I had some serious reservations. I'm actually new to the faculty. Um, I've had a relationship with Occidental College and some of these folks I've known for a long time. This is my first time being officially on the faculty. So it was tricky for me as a faculty because not only did I have to teach online and it's theater, like you said, but I had to try to figure out how to navigate as a faculty member, the whole campus and, and, and all the students and try to figure it out. But I think that a couple of things that I did, I think that a number of people did. One thing was that I feel like um, we got extra prepared in the summertime. So I feel like I can vouch for everyone here is a fantastic teacher um, and professional artist. And I feel like a lot of us took time in the summer to really get um, indoctrinated or get more savvy about how to use technology to teach theater. You know what I mean? So like, you know, obviously everyone had already done Zoom and, you know, email and, you know, social media, but just in terms of like, how, what does that mean to create this experience? So I feel like for me personally, I did a lot of preparations, workshops and that kind of thing. And then I had to try to gear my syllabus towards giving the information, towards having a live experience, but without us being together. You know what I mean? So I just, I threw away all inhibitions about what I thought it would be or any limitations I thought it was gonna be. And actually I feel like, I, I, you have to talk to the students, huh? you know, I can't speak for them, but I feel like we had a real, we had really dynamic courses last semester in and this semester. And just based on some of the evals that I've received, students really feel like they got a tremendous amount from our theater courses. You know, what I feel like what students were saying that they were missing was just being on campus, interacting with their peers, you know what I mean? Talking to the professors after that, that was surly missed. And I feel like the sense of community, it, that was harder, but it seemed like the actual classes were really energized and really invigorating. So um, my first semester, I did a black arts movement course and I did a solo performance course. Um, and those were really exciting, kind of like what, what uh, Susan said, it was, it was partly a camera um, theater course in a way too, because we looked at, okay, how do you develop solo theater, right? How do you, as one artist, go from concept to rehearsing, to writing or rehearsing, to performing it in collaboration with others, but it's all coming through you. And so we were really mindful of like, how do you set, set up a design um, in your room? You know, what does that mean? Um, how are you mindful of the camera when you're acting and playing different characters? Um, and then this semester, I'm doing a course on, um, on Shakespeare and, and Richard III and all these adaptations that have come out of it. And then I directed, I actually directed a main stage production online, which was crazy, Jess, it was crazy. And it was super exciting. Like, it was like, okay, how are we gonna do this? And so, you know, when you have a costume designer and lighting design and sound and set, we had those same elements, but we're looking at how to do it in this environment. And so uh, the participants in the play, I know Laurel can speak to this a lot too, because she directed, but it's almost like you kind of became co-designers, co-conspirators in doing it. Like, you know, your room became like the, the workshop in the studio and we sent people lights, we sent people set pieces and costumes. And so, and they had to shift cameras while they're acting. So it was, it was kind of overwhelming, but kind of exciting. And I think for me, again, I've always been an artist that kind of, I have an agent now and all that kind of stuff. But initially I started in the field doing my own shows, you know, first at cafes and, you know, passing the hat and promoting, you know, and then it, I built it up and now I do like, you know, theater all over the, all over the country and all over the world. But, um, but I think this helps, this helped artists and students become more independent, you know what I mean? And, and, and understand like, how do I build my own show from the ground up? So 
I'd love to hear about with Nick on that. And, you know, Nick, feel free to be, you know, honest and frank. We don't want, you know, we're really honest here at Occidental and like, you know, what worked, what didn't work. But I feel like from the teacher's perspective, it seemed like I was able to, to give the information in a, in a pretty uh, exciting way. Yeah, I can also um, talk about that from the student perspective. For starters, I mean, Zoom class, Zoom school is just incredibly draining as it is. But one thing that these lovely professors have done an, <laughs> an excellent job with has been um, really engaging in like making sure that we are getting the information that we need. And I'm in actually, I'm actually in um, Will's Richard III class. And that has been a wonderful experience. Um, and also when it comes to being involved in a production, I was in one of the productions in the fall. I was in a production of Metamorphoses. And yeah, exactly like Will said, uh, we were generally in charge. Uh, we had to be in charge of setting up our own spaces. So I had to set up lights. I had to set up a blue screen. I had to set up a microphone. I had to prop my camera, my laptop on top of like five boxes so that I could get it to eye level. It was a lot more, I was a lot more immersed in the design side than I had ever really been before. And so like, it has been a really interesting dynamic experience. And I'm very, I'm very much looking forward to getting back to being in person, but this is just, it's been a really interesting experience. And I have, you have to chalk a lot of that up to uh, the professors in this department. I would just say real quick, Jess, you know, it was also weird too, because in some ways, you know, you're working intimately on a production or in a class and, you know, we're a small college. So we work real personable, you know, it's real personal. Like, it's not like, at least not in the theater department, it's not like 50, 60 students. And who's that? I've never seen you. It's like, 10 students, 15 students, eight students. It's like, so it's really up close. So that was kind of weird because I feel like I've gotten to know people really well. And yet I don't really know fully what people look like. Like, I don't think I've ever seen you Nick stand up. You know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? So that's kind of weird too, um, you know, but I feel like we were able to make progress. And I think going back to your question, I, I, I can't honestly say that to you in, in all sincerity. Um, our musical theater studies in the theater department anyway shake out in two main ways, one of which is that I teach a musical theater performance class every year. And we, that is a workshop class where we get up on our feet and explore the, the American musical canon. I have an accompanist who is in every session with us. Every student sings every session. We work on interpretation, connection to the lyric. We work on the technique. We get up on our feet and we um, Every student works on two or three songs, both solos, duets, sometimes trios. And then we end the class with a cabaret performance where we invite people to come take a look at the fruits of our labors. I love that class. I really am a fan of the American Musical Theater canon in all its forms. And um, we just kind of throw down and try to make the best music that we can. And that class is open to students of all backgrounds and experience levels. So whether you sing in the shower or whether you've played all the leads in the school show, come on in and we meet you where we are and we have a good time making music. I'm a musician in addition to being a theater artist and I really love to make music with people. Um, so we'll, we'll be doing that in the spring, which I'm super excited about. And then we, we pull off a big old musical every other year. Our department size is such that we are not able to do a musical, at least a, a faculty driven musical every year. So we put our energies into doing one every other year and we try to pick something big and timely and um, that will have great appeal both to students and to audiences. Uh, we were going to put one on this year. We decided to put that off a year because of the difficulties of making music, you know, uh, online. Um, but year before we did You're in Town and next spring we will do another big old musical. And um, and then, you know, our students sometimes do independent musical projects. Um, one of our seniors this coming year will be doing an independent, um, like a collage that she will put together for herself of various uh, musical selections. And then our music department also teaches um, singing classes that are not glee club classes like you can just go take individual singing classes or group singing classes there and explore your your musical self that way um 
And then, of course, there's also Los Angeles, where there's usually, when we're in our live theater mode, uh, a variety of types of musical theater to go and see. So we make that part of my of our theater going efforts as well. So we're getting to make it and see it all at the same time. We do six big faculty led productions every year. To be brief, we do two big fall main stages, generally two plays from contrasting styles, subject matters, um, and those we do uh, on stage in Keck Theater, our primary performance space. In the spring, we also do two big productions, one of which every other year is a musical, and then every other year uh, we do something that we sort of consider a classic, whatever that may be, a reimagined classic, something that challenges the canon or is within the, the conventional canon. Um, and then we also in the spring semester do what we call the studio show, which is generally a smaller production that's really just focused on acting values. And that show is generally not done in the Keck stage. That show is usually done somewhere else on campus at an alternative performance venue outside, maybe in another building that you wouldn't think of as conventionally theatrical. Mm -hmm. Jamie directed a production in our pool at one point, um, so we like to go far afield. Sarah uh, wrote and directed something uh, of her of her own making that Nick was in last, you know, last year. So we try to go every which way with that production. Also in the spring semester, that's when I do our new play festival, uh, where we do usually four or five small projects. And then Jamie heads our children's theater production during the summer. So, which is an enormous undertaking in and of itself. So there's six big, six big old faculty led shows. And then additionally, and equally in, in important are all the student-led projects that go on as well. Um, independent projects, comps projects, small things, big things in the theater, out of the theater, um, original work that students develop themselves or uh, extant texts that they find and, and restage. So that's, that's sort of our production calendar. And of course, students are involved in every and all levels in putting all those shows on. Yeah, so this last summer would have been our 25th year of producing children's theater um, at the college. And um, it's really grown over the years. At first, it was just a performance. Uh, we would we get six actors and a stage manager and we create our own work um, based on you know three traditional folk tales. As a group, we read a lot of a work and then we decide which we wanna produce, which we wanna create. We improvise off of them, um, uh, transcribe the improvisations, and then um, I get uh, I get those and I turn it into a script. We bring in a, a professor from um, LSU, uh, Nick Erickson, who was a founding member of the Diavolo Dance Theater. Uh, he he helps teach us the very acrobatic and physical style of theater that we do. We don't have sets or costumes. We make everything with our bodies and our voices. Um, and then we, uh, we tour around to local recreation centers and hospitals and senior centers and things like that, in addition to our performing here. And I, I'm really, um, as a former actor myself, I'm really mindful of, you know, <laughs> compensating people for their work. And so we make sure that we pay the actors in the summer. And we have a combination of, uh, you know, funding streams, one from box office, one from a acting camp that we run. So the I also teach the actors in the company how to teach and we have a summer camp that we've run since uh, 2000. And then uh, in addition, we, we get some grant money and foundation money. Um, and so the great thing about it is we do about 30 performances. So you really have an opportunity to sit inside a role for a, a longer period of time normally than you can during the regular uh, uh, semester season. And uh, that's that's proven to be really advantageous to uh, our students. They really get a feeling for things. They can make adjustments and changes, encounter different uh, aspects of. Uh, we have to go to uh, different locations and like encounter what's there. So it makes you really think on your feet, um, and you're a part of the creative process. And I think that's something I, I think that all our classes are trying to do is to give you the the tools so that you can go out and make your own work. 
fact that a lot of our classes culminate in some kind of a performance as Laurel's musical theater class does. Uh, my comedy and social change class uh, culminates in a performance of uh, student written and performed work. Um, Will's class I know uh, does that. And even within um, the acting classes themselves, as Sarah mentioned, there's a performance that's gonna be put on film. So we're always really trying to generate work, I think in the department. And that's uh, something that we really like to do. Um, and the children's theater is a part of that. Um, I kind of had a question because I don't plan on majoring in theater, but I am super interested in doing it. Um, and I've kind of been thinking about like what that looks like as far as like time management and workload. Cause I know like it's a rigorous school um, and at least like the productions at my school, there's times where you spend like five hours after school in the theater and it can be kind of hard to balance. So like if that's something that's difficult or if it's more manageable or something that comes up a lot. One of the things you might want to wait to, you know, audition for and be in rehearsals for one of our main stages in your first semester till you get a sense of how things are going. But there are smaller projects. There's a new play festival that will, um, I think you're a writer also, if I remember correctly, but you might submit a work to that. And then you have maybe an intense month at the beginning of the spring semester where you work with the director and work on rewrites, or you could be in someone else's piece um, and there'll be a slightly, you know, it's, it's definitely a very compact, um, shorter rehearsal period. And yes, as Sarah says in the notes, we get, our productions are part of our program. They are not extracurricular. We give course credit for being in that work. Uh, we tend to rehearse something like three to four hours a night, four to five days a week, it's flexible. And we have actually come to an understanding this year in Zoom, we, we actually rehearsed a lot less because it's so exhausting to be. Like I mentioned, I've been in a couple different productions, um, one of which was rehearsed in person before we went into lockdown and eventually became an audio play. The other one was rehearsed entirely throughout Zoom, like through Zoom. And like Susan said, the directors really take, they really value the time that you put in. So they're not going to like completely overwork you. Um, personally, I would recommend just doing whatever you feel like you can. Um, I know certain people, like especially like with theater, different people have different levels of energy and different people tire out at different rates. And so take that, I would say, into account. Um, and also just like, have fun with it. I mean, it's, it's like, ultimately it is, it is a curricular thing and it is something that like, it's like an intensive study, but it's also just really fun to do. And it's really fun to work with the people at Oxy, both student directors, faculty directors, and, um, Per, like outside directors that get brought in to do plays. I mean, I, I would say it's fairly similar to the day of any other student because while a lot of classes do like end in like production or like performance, a lot of them are just like regular classes where you sit down and do a lecture and yeah, that kind of stuff. Um, for me, my schedule was usually get up, have breakfast. I like to condense my classes together as much as possible so that I'm not, it's not like completely staggered and broken up. Um, yeah, like I would say like when I was in a production, I still had a good amount of time to like hang out with friends, get my homework done, be involved in extracurriculars and so. Well, I was going to add to that. I know that, you know, Nick, of course, is the best person, Avery, to, to give you feedback here. But and I'm sure you're up to speed on this since uh, since you've been looking at colleges. But, you know, we're not a conservatory school. So if you were headed toward conservatory and you were a theater student, a typical day um, might keep you in 
different kinds of classes six to 12 hours, depending on, depending on the day, um, rehearsals, classes, uh, you know, just keep you really busy. We're a liberal arts college. And so our hope and expectation is that you're making theater and are studying theater with us. And of course, you're doing your other classes in other departments and um, that your day has variety and that you're not radically stacked with with rehearsals, classes, hours, unless you want to be. And certainly we have those kinds of students who are really into, want to be in the room, want to throw down all day. Um, but that's that's usually not how it, it looks for us. And if you're a theater person, you know, as you get closer to opening nights, things heat up and there's just more time in the room and that's all part of the process. And also a lot of it has to do with what kind of theater um, what sort of role in the production you're taking. If you're working design and technical crew, it's a different kind of um, time commitment and just a different sort of work. But I, I think Nick's giving you a little insight in that it, um, it can be flexible and you can be in control of it. Internships are not available for first year students until the summer after the first year. Um, and then there are a variety of different ways that you can find internships. Um, you might find one in your local um, theater community or somewhere else around the country. Um, and we currently have some funding to help support those internships if they are unpaid or just minimally supported. Um, the Los Angeles County Department of Arts and Culture has paid internships in the summer that are in a bunch of different arts organizations. And uh, so those are available. Uh, Oxy's Career Center has a program called Intern LA. And there's always at least a couple of theater companies that have internships through that program. So you can apply to them competitively. During the year, once you get to your sophomore year, you can also take in, in, get an internship for academic credit for up to two units twice. Um, um, a lot of students at Oxy end up studying abroad their junior year, and um, during advising, your advisors will most likely ask you and tell you uh, where you can look for study abroad resources, because you will want to plan ahead since certain courses are only offered in the fall, certain courses are only offered in the spring, and that might help determine which semester you want to study abroad. And we have some students in the theater department who, when they go abroad, they want to do a conservatory program where they're living, breathing, eating theater all day long. And a program that students have started to attend over the past few years has been BADA, which is the um, British American Dramatic Academy, and it's in London. And students spend the semester in London going to see London theater and really honing their performance skills. Um, you do not have to do a theater program when you study abroad, but if you want the courses to count towards the theater major, um, you will need to get approval from the department. Um, but the BADA program is already approved by us and it counts as 16 um, credits uh, towards your theater, theater major. There's another, um, there's another program in the United States that some students have done as well um, at the, it's at the O'Neill Center. Why am I blanking on the name of it, Susan? National Theater Institute. National Theater, thank you. The National Theater Program, which is in Connecticut. Um, and that program, it functions like a study abroad, except you're actually in the United States. But this is um, also a conservatory program where you could focus on musical theater or directing or acting, um, but it's in the United States, obviously, and it works, uh, the, the program brings in a lot of directors and artists from New York City. So those are two programs that we have students, um, students go to, but we've had students attend uh, study abroad programs all over, uh, all over the world. So once you arrive at Oxy, maybe the first time you meet with your advisor, you could talk about that. But also, let's say you arrive at Oxy and you have an advisor who's not in the theater department, but you want to know more, reach out to any one of us. Uh, Sarah, Laurel, and I are official advisors in the theater department, and Will will be starting next year um, advising students. And we can give you informal advice, even if we're not your official advisors, and help think all of these possibilities going forward.